Let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of God. We're going to go to, we'll start at Genesis 49 and verse 25. And before we go into the scripture, I want to give you my topic now. I want to give you the title of it now because the scriptures may seem random. So I'm going to give you the topic now, and we're going to bring it all the way back around. The topic is a mother's love, a mother's love. And I hope and pray that I just inspire and encourage all of the mothers today. And I won't be very long doing it. But I do, all, I do want you all to go and enjoy your mothers and mothers enjoy your children. Let's go to Genesis 49 and 25. We'll start there and then we'll go over to Nehemiah. It says, by the God of your father who will help you and by the mighty, almighty who will bless you with blessings of heaven above, blessings of of the deep that lies beneath, blessings of the breast and of the womb. Everybody say, of the womb. If you will, please highlight, circle, whatever. Bring emphasis to that word womb. Bring emphasis to that word womb. If you will, can you go over to Nehemiah? Nehemiah chapter 9. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. It says, I don't have time to wait for you all, so I'm just going to keep moving, okay? <laughs> I know Nehemiah is in a weird place. It's right after, I believe it's right after Ezra. Well, where is Ezra? I'm going to just keep going. <laughs> Let me just keep going. They refused, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 17. They refused to obey. Lord Jesus, how many of us have had children who just refused to obey? Let's keep going. That's, that's, let's keep going. And they were not mindful of your wonders that you did among them, but they were hardened, but they hardened their necks. And in their rebellion, they appointed a leader to return to their bondage. Lord have mercy. But you are God, ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abundant in kindness, and did not forsake them. Verse 18, even when they made a a molded calf for themselves and said, "This this is your God that brought you up out of Egypt. And they worked great provocations, yet in your manifold mercies, underline, highlight, bring emphasis to manifold mercies. Just a sidebar, that word manifold means multiple. It means many. It means diverse. God got mercy for everything. If you're a liar, he's got mercy for that. If you're a cheater, he's got mercy for that. If you're an adulterer, he's got some mercy. Manifold. Everybody say manifold mercy. You did not forsake them in the wilderness. The pillar of the cloud did not Depart from them by day to lead them on the road, nor the pillar of fire by night to show them light and the way they should go. Your manifold mercy. I'm almost done. I'm going to give you one more scripture, and then we're going to move. We're going to move. We're going to move. Let's go to, I want to go to Psalm 145 and 8. Psalm 145 and 8 says quickly, it says, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and great in mercy. The Lord is good to all and his tender mercies, everybody say his tender mercies are over all his works. His tender mercies, his manifold mercies. His loving kindness and his tender mercies. Lord, have mercy. Bishop has been declaring to us, and he's been teaching us on God's mercy. And he has made it very clear to us that we are here only because of God's 
mercy. Because we are sinners, because we, are, we were wretched sinners bound to hell's flame, which we deserved. Help me, Holy Spirit. Because God and his love and his mercy would not allow us to die in our sins, because of his love and because of his mercy, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins and take the credit for our sin so that we could take the credit for his righteousness. Now, because of Jesus, when Jesus, when God sees me, he doesn't see my previous sin, but he sees the righteousness of Christ. And now I belong to him and he belongs to me. I am his child and he is my father. He is my friend and I am his friend. Thank you, God, for your mercy because I deserved hell's flame. I deserve condemnation and damnation, but because of your love and because of your mercy, you saved my soul. Hallelujah. We deserved hell's flames. But I like to say it like this. God's mercy prevents what we did deserve. And God's grace presents what we don't deserve. Ah, not only did my mercy keep you from dying, but now your, my grace gives you eternal life. Uh, my grace is going to give you some joy and some peace and some prosperity and some wealth. I'm going to put some things in your hand that you didn't deserve. I'm going to put some things in your hand that you did not ask for. Not only am I giving you my mercy, but I'm giving you my grace. Thank God for your mercy and your grace. What I love about God's mercy is this. Bishop said something so powerful. He said, when you give mercy, it comes from a place of power. It comes from a place of power. It comes from a place of ability. Help me, Holy Spirit. Why is that so important? Because I hear this question all of the time. Just stay with me, mothers. I'm going somewhere. I hear this question all the time. If God is so powerful, if God is so strong, then why is there so much evil in the world? Why are there so many evil people in the world? Doesn't he have the strength and the ability to destroy evil and destroy evil people? Well, let me tell you, the reason why God allows evil people to still exist, it is not because of his lack of strength but it has everything to do with his restraint. Helping somebody in here today. Ah, it is because of my love that I'm giving all wicked people an opportunity to get it right. And it is because of my mercy that I'm not allowing them to be destroyed. And it is because of my mercy I am using restraint. I'm not going to use the strength and the ability and the power that I have to destroy them because I love them and I have mercy on them. It is some real strength when you have the power to, to cause revenge, but you restrain yourself. It is some real strength when you have the ability to cuss somebody out and you restrain yourself. It is some real strength when you have the power to win an argument, but you restrain yourself and you learn how to be right and quiet. I could run around this place right now. How many of us have the wisdom and the humility to avoid an argument because, oh my goodness, because of restraint? I'm, Mercy causes you to show restraint. Love causes you to show mercy. Mercy causes you to show restraint. I got the ability to slap you upside your head. But because of the mercy that I have, God had the ability to destroy us in our sins. He had the ability to bring us into condemnation and to damnation forever, but because of his mercy. Thank God for your mercy. 
Thank God that he showed some restraint. And so we go to Nehemiah chapter 9. In Nehemiah chapter 9, the people are asking God for forgiveness because they are guilty of idolatry. Just stay with me for a second. And they're praying, and they said, listen, God, remember what you did for our forefathers. Our forefathers were some knuckleheads. They were stiff-necked. They were disobedient. They were idolatrous. They complained. They actually built a golden calf and said that that was the God that brought them out of Egypt right after you showed them your mighty hand. How disrespectful and how crazy do you have to be? He said, God, but because of your manifold mercies. Now that word mercy, that word, that phrase manifold mercy and tender mercy is different. It's a, it's a, it's a, a yearning. It's a longing. It's a deep compassion that comes from your insides. It's a yearning. It's, it's, it's not, it can't be explained. It can't really be described. It's, it's something that is so passionate. It's something that is so strong in you. I have this strong connection to these people. I have this strong passion and emotion for these people because they came from me. I know they're knuckleheads. I know they're hard-headed. I know they're idolatrous, but there's something on the inside of me that will not allow them to die in the wilderness because I love them so much, because I yearn for them so much, because I'm so passionate for them. I have to bring them in the land of promise even though they betrayed me, even though they hurt me, even though they disobeyed me, even though they're complaining, even though they're hard-headed and stiff-necked, even though they've turned their backs on me, there's something on the inside of me that will not let them go, that will not leave them alone. There's something I can't let them go. God says, God says, I hear you, Holy Spirit. I need to prophesy for a second. God says, oh, help me, Holy Spirit. You've made mistakes. You've done wrong in my sight, but I love you so much. Oh, God says, people are judging you, and they're saying what you are, and they're saying who you are, but the Holy Spirit says it's not about what you are. It's about what you are to me. It's not about who you are. It's about who you are to me. You may be a liar in their eyes, but you're my son. You may be a cheater in their eyes, but you're my daughter. And my compassion and my passion for you that is in my loins won't let you go. I still love you. I'm not mad at you. When you call on my name, I will answer every time. When you seek my face, I will show up every time. You stop beating yourself up. And you call on the name of Jesus and Jesus will come in and he will. That word, tender mercies, that phrase tender mercies and manifold mercies. It's a deep longing. It's a deep compassion that can't really even be described. Now, Pastor Brandon, you look crazy because this is Mother's Day. What does it have to do with Mother's Day? This word in the Hebrew, I don't know how to say it because I speak English. <laughs> Barely. This word in the Hebrew is the exact, when you look at tender mercies, when you look at manifold mercies, and when you look at the word compassion, all of these words are used with the same word in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament. You want to know what also was used for that same exact word? Womb. The word compassion, the words tender mercy and manifold mercy and womb 
Lord Jesus, I was about to fall. I was going to need somebody's compassion. And the word womb, all the same word in the Hebrew. And I studied and I studied and I couldn't figure out the connection. Then I learned that that word expresses the deep compassion that a mother has for the child of her womb. The same mercy and compassion that God has for you that won't allow him to leave you alone. The same compassion that causes God to go above and beyond for you. That same mercy that God showed you while you were in your sin is the same compassion, the same mercy, the same emotion, the same passion and emotion and yearning that a mother has for her child. I can show you, I can prove it in the Bible. This yearning, this compassion, I can prove it to you in the Bible. Can I prove it to you in the Bible very quickly? Go, over me to, go with me to 1 Kings chapter 3, verse 16. 1 Kings chapter 3. And I'm closing with this. Let me give you the story. We all know the story of the two women who had two children, right? Had two children, and they went to sleep. One of the women, it was one child, excuse me, the one child. Let's read the story. Because I'm already messing it up. Let's read the story very quickly. Let's go to verse 16. Now, two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one said, and one woman said, Oh my Lord, this woman I dwell in the same house. I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth, and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died. And in, in the night, because she laid on him, so she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maid servant slept and laid him in her bosom, and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there, was, there he was, dead. But when I had ex- ex- examined him in the morning, indeed, it was not my son whom I bore. This b- child didn't come from me. This child didn't come from my womb. Thank you, Jesus. Then the other woman said, no, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. And the king said, the one says, this is my son who lives, and, the, and your son is the dead one. And the other one says the same. Let's go to verse 24. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and the other half to the other. Now, let me help you with this. The king was not planning on cutting the child in half. Let's make that very clear. He was looking for something. He was looking for something. He was testing these women. I can figure out who the real mama is. There's something I'm looking for. What am I looking for? What what am I looking for? Ah, help me, Jesus. Verse 26. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion. That's... That's that same word, tender mercy. That's that same word, manifold mercy. 
That's that same word, compassion. That's that same word, womb. Ah, oh, that boy came from my womb. I can't let him die. I would, I would rather give him up than let him die because of my passion, because of my strong emotion that I can't explain. I can't let him die. I can't. He, she said, King, no, no, let her have him. Let her have him. And the other woman said, no, kill him. If I can't have him, then we both can't have him. And the king said to the real woman, give her, to her, give her her baby because I see a compassion there that only a mother has. I, I see a love there that only a mother can portray. That's what I was looking for. I wasn't going to kill the baby. I just needed to see who this boy's mama was because the mama will show some compassion. The mama will show some mercy. The mama will have a yearning and a longing for this boy. Fathers, we don't understand the compassion of a mother. We don't get it. Why? Because we don't have a womb. We don't get it. We don't understand it. I'm talking to us, fathers. We'd be ready to swing off on that boy. I have a womb. We be ready to swing off, grab a belt, grab a switch. Here come mama. Baby, don't whoop him. He tired. I don't care if he tired. He need a whooping. No, just let him get some sleep. He'll be okay when he wakes up. The compassion. We don't understand it. So we don't have a womb. I was talking to my wife. Give me a second. You got a, you got a minute? I was talking to my wife. My wife is the mother of both of my children. And she shared with me the childbearing experience. The childbearing experience. She said there was a mental, physical, and emotional change. She said as soon as she found out she was pregnant. She had no symptoms at this point. As soon as she found out she was pregnant, the mental switch went off was, I got to care for this child. And every decision that I make after this point is not just for me, but it's for this child. I can't eat the same. I can't. She said, I didn't, I stopped hanging out with crazy people because I didn't want my child hearing the, their foolishness. <laughs> I, can't, I can't move the same. Every decision from this point on is for the sake of of the life of this child. And then she said, once I started showing symptoms, the physical changes started happening. I started getting, I started getting bigger and my feet started hurting and started swelling up and I couldn't sleep. I was throwing up and, and, and I had morning sickness. I was sick all the time. I had these cravings and, and mood swings. Yes, mood swings. Mood swings and mood swings. Okay, let me stop. I'm going to get in trouble. Not being able to sleep, gaining weight, having the discomfort of having this huge belly. Help me, Holy Spirit. And she said that I wasn't pregnant at the times that I wanted to be. I was pregnant all the time. For 24, all day, every day for nine months, I was pregnant. I was pregnant for 40 weeks. I was pregnant for 280 days straight. I was pregnant for 6,570 minutes. I was, no, for, yes, 70 days. No, I got all my days messed up. You know what I'm trying to say. All day, every day, I was pregnant and tired and hungry and uncomfortable. But I knew if I could just hold on, the child that is in, on the inside of me is worth the pain, is worth the struggle because I have a connection to this child. 
I didn't understand it. I felt like even though the child was in my womb, I felt like I knew my child already. I had a, this special connection. And we wonder, we wonder why that mama keep bailing out that knucklehead boy. He keep going to jail. I remember my dad told me years ago when I was a kid, he said, son, I'm going to tell you now, if you wind up in jail because you did something stupid, don't call me. Because <laughs> once you in jail, you in jail. Call your You wonder why that mama keeps bailing that knucklehead boy out. You wonder why that mama keeps saving that fast, slick mouth girl. You wonder why. But have you ever wondered why God keeps bailing you out? When you make your stupid mistakes, and you make poor decisions, you keep falling into the same traps and you keep falling into the same temptation and God is there every single time. Have you ever wondered why God continues to come to your rescue? Have you ever wondered why God continues to come save you? Every single time. It is because of the mercy of God says, I know you've fallen into sin. I know you messed up. But every time you call on my name, I'm right there with open arms waiting for you because you're my child. You came from me. You were born of my spirit and I love you and I will do whatever it takes to have you because I yearn for you. I long for you, says God. And so Jesus, and so Jesus got up on that cross for my crazy self because he loved me. His tender mercy, everybody say tender mercy and his manifold mercy wouldn't leave me to die in my sin. This is the same compassion, the same mercy that a mother has for her child. Thank you mothers for your love. Thank you for not giving up on us. Thank you for sticking by our side when we did not deserve you when we didn't deserve your love you were there right with us the whole time when people thought you were crazy for bailing me out that's my son that's my daughter I have to do something thank you Jesus Thank you, Father. I'm done. I'm done. Thank you, mothers, for your love. Thank you for the deep compassion that you have for the child of your womb. Everybody who is not of mother, can we applaud our mothers, please? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. It breaks my heart to see men calling themselves mothers. I saw my wife get cut open and a baby pulled out of her. I saw my wife having to walk up the stairs backwards 
in a horrendous recovery. They say C-sections are, is one of the most dangerous procedures you can have. It's a life-threatening procedure. My wife had two. You're going to sit up here and call yourself a woman. It's disrespectful. And it's demeaning to what it means to be a woman. We honor you, not just mothers. We honor you women, those who are able to care and bear children. We honor you. We're standing. We're going. We're standing. Please stand. Please stand. Please stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.